Welcome ladies and gentlemen, Elite Clockman here. Today I'll be covering the new series which is taking over the Skibidi Toilet community called the Skibidi Toilet Multiverse. Episode 8 was released today and I'll be analyzing and revealing all the easter eggs in episode 8. If you guys do want analysis on the earlier episodes, let's try to get this video to 10,000 likes and the channel to 10,000 subscribers in the first week. If you guys have watched episode 7, you know that we went to the Clockman base, but that wasn't the important part. The most important thing was that Clockwoman was introduced and she is so goddamn. Um, okay. I gotta hold myself. I'm not a simp like elite cameraman. I'm a gentleman. This lovely being was introduced and used her time reversal powers to fix the large Clockman. But that's beside the point, and I'll analyze everything if we do reach the 10,000 like goal. At the end of episode 7, the cameraman holding the tablet informs the Clockman about the Titan Clockman being captured, and this is crucial, because he needs to be saved. Before we get into the Skibidi Multiverse Episode 8 analysis, I need to mention that the analysis of this series will be completely separate from the original Skibidi Toilet series, because the Multiverse series is a branch timeline that starts after Episode 59's ending, and we'll have to assume that everything that happened before Episode 59 is the same but anything after will be completely different. And maybe Clockman and their time abilities are a foreshadowing of the fact that the timeline has been altered, but I'll get into those theories in my upcoming videos. Now let's get to what happens in episode eight. Here we go. We start the episode seeing a bald toilet in a room with rocket thrusters heading towards him with a table in front of him. This frame already reveals that an interrogation is going on, and I would say that his bald shiny head is brighter than my future but what's about to happen makes it much worse. Seconds later, the camera pans to the right, and we see a normal speakerman holding some type of recording device next to the dark speakerman, which we saw in episode 63 of Skibidi Toilet once again reminding us that all the characters in Skibidi Toilet lives in this universe too, even though most of the events that happened are different. Right after we see them, Clockman enters the room looking very mad, and he smashes his hands onto the metal table in front of the baldy toilet, which makes the baldy toilet actually scared because we can see him shivering. But he gets some confidence somehow and spits onto the clockman. This leads the clockman getting even more made, and he just snaps his fingers leading us to hear the rocket thrusters charring. We can see the baldy toilet being confused for a second, but right at the same instant, the thruster starts working and the dude literally burns to his ashes but we can see the clockman watching without a care in the world, and he actually might be enjoying this scene because since they haven't gotten any information out of the baldy toilet yet, he uses his time reversal powers to bring back the baldy toilet to life while he is burning. This leads to him infinitely dying and burning, which would literally lead to infinite torture, which is crazy. I can't imagine anyone going through something like this and coming out mentally stable. And we can see the baldy toilet being incredibly scared after the clockman stops but for some reason he gets confident again spouting some nonsense to the clockman again. I guess being bald gives you confidence. Blood really thinks he is Kratos. Right after this, the clockman starts the rocket thrusters once again with the time reversal a couple times. This really shows us that the height the clockman would go to for information. They really are a cruel race, but deep within them lies kindness, but I'll get into their character traits in my upcoming analysis videos. After this incredible torture, the baldy toilet gives up and starts writing all the information he knows to the paper in front of him. But we don't know what he has written and revealed. My guess would be that we'll get to know this later on with what actions the clockman takes, but it probably will never be revealed completely. Also in the original series, normal toilets aren't usually intelligent enough to write stuff, and most they can do is sing the Skibidi toilet song. We do know that. It's their language, but they always speak in the same monotone voice unless they are a special toilet. This baldy toilet seems more intelligent and evolved compared to the regular toilets in the original series. Even though it's an old version because as you guys know, all the new toilets have armored gray toilets instead of the old white ones. Also after this scene we see the dark speaker man getting smaller, but this might either just be a mistake or because of the camera angle. I have no idea unless it's an ability they want to give him later on. After the information is given, the POV cameraman leaves the room, and it's revealed that we are actually in the clockman base, 
But if we pause here, we can see that there are more cameramen compared to actual clockmen. On the left, we can see one of the clockmen, and on the right side of the room, there are two cameramen working on computers and one cameraman just looking at the tools. One thing is for sure, we really need to name these clockmen because every clockman is different, unlike the other Alliance members. Clockmen are kind of more similar to the TV man from the original series, because as you guys know, TV man also have the special ability to teleport, and they are smaller in numbers, and each entity from the TV race is considered more unique. After we go inside the main room, the POV cameraman turns behind and we see the clockman pulling a lever causing the room to light in orange with the rocket thruster sounds. We can safely assume that this lever was the control mechanism for the rockets, and we won't be seeing this particular baldy toilet ever again. We see the clockman going towards the clockman who is working on the computer, and he starts typing some stuff. Seconds later, a new text prompt shows up saying that the Skibidi Toilet Base's locations is targeted. In the Skibidi Toilet Multiverse series, we usually do get more text prompts revealing more information to us compared to the original series. And there were even Morse codes hidden in earlier episodes for analysis channels to pick up on, but we'll get to those in later analysis videos. After this is shown to us, we see a large TV man walking towards us in the base, and the camera slowly zooms into the screen changing the POV. This is a throwback to episode 60, where we saw a large TV man showing a POV cameraman's point of view from his screen. The weird thing about this POV is that I couldn't figure out which cameraman we were at first. It looks like we are flying and we see the buzzsaw toilet from the original series about to kill a normal cameraman. I thought we had two weird tubes at first, but looking at it carefully, they look like the plunger heads that the plunger cameraman has, and we are flying. I'll explain why we were in the plunger cameraman POV in a second, but I'm assuming that the plunger being white was just a mistake or a rendering issue, because seconds later we start charging up just like how glitch plunger cameraman charged his toilet in episode 63 in the original series. There's also one more correlation between these two episodes because we also saw dark speaker man in the same episode. After charging up and attacking, we can see that one of the plungers is gone, and we turn our back to attack the helicopter toiler. If we stop at the right frame, we can clearly see that the white stuff were plungers. Maybe it's a change in the design since this is a different timeline, or it was just a rendering mistake. This attack obliterates the helicopter toilet, and we already know that Glitch Plunger is incredibly powerful because of what happened in the original series in episode 63. He is so fast that, other than a few toilets like G-Man and Scientist Toilet or UFO Toilet, no toilet can go against him. After the incredible attack, Glitch Plunger Toilet turns to his right, and we can see the Titan Speaker Man fighting against some toilets and he uses his speakers to lure off the toilets and suddenly a toilet we've never seen comes to the scene, which does look like a party toilet because of his weird glasses and fireworks. Without hesitation, he shoots the fireworks at Titan Speakerman. But as you guys already know, this is nowhere enough to go past Titan Speakerman's defenses, and he flies up to charge his hand cannons and starts shooting the firework toilet. After this, we see him nearly getting infected again, but his reflexes have improved after last time, and he dodges it last second. The parasite toilet realizes this and tries to escape, but gets shot in a moment. What happened after will change the series' future a lot because we see the ground breaking suddenly and something is moving towards us. We can clearly see that the Titan Speaker Man has no idea what's going on because he starts charging his blasters, but suddenly one of the clockmen starts ringing and saying no to Titan Speaker Man. We can see both a normal clockman and a large clockman waiting for something. Suddenly the ground cracks and a hole opens up. This leads to a new race coming out of the hole. We see three normal drill man and one large drill man which actually looks like Dr. Octopus from Spider-Man. But that's besides the point. After they come out from the ground, POV cameraman zooms in and we see the first assumed handshake between the two races. Moments later, the drills start communicating by spinning their drills, and they tell someone or something to move somewhere else, and a very deep sound comes from it. This actually might be the Titan Drill Man or a fleet of Drill Man, but I'm assuming that we'll learn more about this in the next couple episodes. This also leads to the POV cameraman getting a notification on his tablet, and we can actually see the glitch plunger toilets. Toilet in this frame. If you zoom in on the bottom, the gray parts are the toilet. But the main thing is the prompt that showed up on the screen. It says, 
Get ready for your next mission. Mission type, rescue. This clearly indicates that the Alliance will be sent on a mission to save the Titan Clockman. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, at the end of episode seven, we saw something similar. It seems like this series will be going on for a while and it does have a cool story. So if you do want more analysis videos on the Skibidi Multiverse series, make sure to like the video and subscribe. Elite Clockman out.